Association is honored to recognize John Bonnet with his highest honor, the Distinguished Service to Journalism Award. MA's President Mike Jacobson will be presenting the award. He'll join me now. The MA president has many privileges, and one is to pre present these special awards. MA's highest honor is the Al McIntosh Distinguished Service to Journalism Award. This award recognizes any Minnesotan who has made significant contributions throughout his or her career to a larger, broader group than those served in everyday professional life. For the advancement of the profession of journalism or the newspaper industry, or for the promotion of freedom of the press, freedom of speech, open meetings, or freedom of information. Today's recipient has far exceeded every one of those requirements. Jean Codet. <laughs> John started his journalism career in 1974 as the wire editor at the St. Cloud Times. He rose to the ranks for 42 years to retire in December 2016 as executive editor. The long list of John's accomplishments can be found in the DSTJ program that is on your table. Under his watch, if my count is correct, the St. Cloud Times was won the Vance Trophy as the state's best daily newspaper 26 times. Most recently, last night. Passion and mentorship are words often used to describe John. He is described as the perfect combination of a journalist, coach, motivator, and leader. Mike Babby said John has dedicated his professional life to challenging the comfortable and to giving voice to the voiceless. He was absolutely without fear in taking on folks willing to ignore free expression. And he promised me the other day that he would continue to help m a in our uh, lobbying and legal efforts. John, I'm honored to present this award to you from the Minnesota Newspaper Association for your distinguished service to journalism. Each had a clicker. 
As the exercise moved forward, the group was asked a series of questions about where they get their news. Facebook. Our journalist's credibility. Click, click, click. Terrible. Our fairness. Click, click, click. Terrible. We were behind the glass wall looking at the results from the clickers with the attorneys and others. To be blunt, it was an ugly day. And I left that mock jury thing where the mock jurors were negotiating as to whether they should uh, award three, five, or nine million dollars in damages. Later in the day, MA's great First Amendment attorney, Mark Gampenson, said to me behind the glass wall separating us from the jurors, you know, John, you shouldn't be watching this. And I know he meant well, but I told him I had to see this because it is how people feel about journalists. Now we do a lousy job of telling our story to the public. We'll never be loved for what we do. But we must be understood and we must be appreciated. And we will do this by protecting what is the most important bond that we have with our readers. Our credibility. Our credibility will be protected by vigilant and complete reporting, watchful editing, correcting our mistakes, investigative and watchdog work, having various opinions on issues from many viewpoints, and having coverage that represents all the diverse parts of our community. Finally, I have a suggestion. I think it's time to latch onto the marketing efforts of the New York Times and others to stress invest in quality journalism, or truth needs your support, or real journalism, it needs your support. We worry all the time about revenue. I firmly believe that we can tap into people's desire to get accurate information and stories well told. It will combat fake news, alternative facts, falsehoods, and other insidious efforts to undermine truth. But let me speak now to those people early in their careers, and I know you're there. You're wondering if journalism has a future. Well, listen to your elders. Yes, journalism has a future, and the future is you. I've outlined the opportunities and the responsibilities. Now, go forth and commit journalism. Thank you. <laughs>